Welcome to the panel presented by SportCheck. We're at the flagship location at Western Jamal for the first time this season, gents, and a special guest as hey, well, yes. Gene. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be here. Just uh, temporarily uh, filling in for Bob. We look forward to him being back uh, next time you're here or next time you do. Well, we love when either one of you guys are here, but one guy who's been a staple is Jack Michaels from 630 Chad. I'm Tony Barr from Oilers TV. Gentlemen, the Oilers came off a pretty successful weekend in Nashville and Chicago, defeating both Central Division foes. But last night, it was a special teams battle that they just lost, Jack. Well, and when you've been playing as many close games as Edmonton has recently, and you lose the special teams battle, generally speaking, in the National Hockey League, it means you're going to lose the game. And last night was a pretty dramatic example, with Edmonton going 0 for 5 on the power play while Minnesota converted all three of its power play opportunities. Five on five, I still felt like the Oilers were the better team. And so I don't think this is a major situation where Edmonton has to be troubled by this loss. But if you're going to play a ton of close games in the National Hockey League, you need to be on the right side of the special teams battle. But five on five, I have little quarrel with Edmonton's game last night. They're playing a 100-point club. Yeah. It's not like Minnesota's chopped liver. Yeah, I think because of all the really good teams they've been playing, Minnesota's just one of those clubs that sort of falls in between. People don't necessarily know how good they are. But I thought, Jack, on the heels, you're talking about special teams. Todd McClellan uh, was asked about it first question last night. He said, that's the easiest answer I'm going to give you, of course. Anyone can see that it, it was an issue for us. And, and I think, you know, Todd's been around a long time, and you play all these really good high-end teams. And as a coach, you're concerned that there might be a little bit of a fallback. And, I, you know, it might be just located regarding their special teams, but it, it just didn't have the, you know, the push that they had against Chicago. Todd saying last season, a game like Chicago, we would have found a way to lose. Now we found a way to win. And last night seemed like a little bit like last season, a game that was kind of right there available for them. They couldn't get either the big save or the penalty kill or just something to turn things in their favor and eventually get two points. And Gene touches on something that I think is worth mentioning, even though this is an Oilers panel. But Minnesota, uh, look, I mean, Jason Zucker scored 33 goals last year. Uh, you've got Ryan Suter, who's got 250 point seasons in the last three years. Jared Spurgeon from Edmonton, back to back years of 39, 38 points. No one knows these. Mikhail Granlin yeah. is coming yeah. off back to back seasons of 67 and 69 points. You make a very good point. Yeah. Minnesota is the least known 100-point club of anyone in the National Hockey yep. League. And the reason is they haven't gotten it done in the playoffs. But don't be deceived. I mean, last night was a quality game against a quality opponent. It's a 4-3 game. You don't win special teams. You don't win the game. And it's great because you guys just both touched on it. But yesterday, talking to Bruce Boudreau after the game, he said if Mikhail Granlin played in any other city in a Canadian market, people would know how good Mikhail Granlin is when asked about number 64. But gentlemen, coming off that loss, how much emphasis do you put on this next game against Chicago before heading out on a four-game road trip? Gene, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, it's it's a big one because it, it seems like, guys, I, you know, it seems like we're barely home. I mean, it, it's, it's you know, I know there was the big tri trip to Europe and being in Germany and Sweden, it was all wonderful. But it's like as soon as the Oilers get home, before you know it, you, you've almost, you haven't even unpacked or you just unpacked and you're ready to, to pack again. And, I mean, they head off. Detroit's playing better. Uh, Washington's Cup champs. Uh, Tampa's one of the best teams in the NHL. And Florida, uh, they've got their own travel issues because they're headed back after playing, you know, in Finland. So uh, no rest for the wicked and yeah. no rest from the road. I mean, it just continues for the Edmonton Oilers. But I've liked their game on the road. They just proved it again this past weekend. But it would be, uh, it would be nice to sort of catapult themselves back onto the road, headed to Detroit, with a big win and two wins in, you know, back-to-back, -back, almost home-and-home -home scenarios against Chicago. Gene makes an excellent point in terms of the travel. I was just talking about this actually last night with some of the Minnesota brass. Is for Edmonton, you know, week on, week off, road versus home, doesn't sound like a lot, but when you live in Edmonton, that's an extra couple hours flying every time. It's yeah. not like you're centrally located like Minnesota, where it's an hour and a half to Nashville, 45 minutes to Chicago, or even any of the Eastern Conference teams where yeah. you're back home in your bed often after a road game. So that's what Gene's talking about in terms of that back and forth. Doesn't look like a long road trip, but it does seem like an extension of everything because some of these players, some of the brass hasn't even unpacked from the first trip yet. Yeah. So it is vital to get the game against Chicago. And here's why, as Gene mentioned, you know, Detroit's improved. You go four more on the road and at some point it's going to catch up with you. I mean, the Oilers have won four in a row on the yeah. road. But generally speaking, in the National Hockey League, it is tough together to cobble, you know, long streaks 
on the road. You've got to establish yourself at home as a 600 or maybe even a 650 squad. Yeah. So you allow yourself some cushion when inevitably it tilts back the other way away from you. And McDavid Drysdale said yesterday they got to make that a difficult barn to play in. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, that does it for this week's edition of the panel presented by Sportcheck. This Sportsnet's Gene Prince. Gene, thanks again for joining us. Happy to fill really in. Really appreciate it. Jack Michaels, you can hear his call on 630 Ched tomorrow, and you can keep it locked in on Oilers TV. Me and Jessica Kent will have you covered.